How to Bottle Wine, Cider, and Mead. Okay, so this is actually the last installment of our Pimit series, but we wanted to make a video just on bottling. All the things that you have to do or that you should do, suggestions, tips, tricks, everything, and then we're gonna show you exactly how we do it. So this particular brew is our Pimit, and we started this back on October 30th of 2019. Today is June 29th of 2020. So you know, this is already like eight months old, all right? We oaked this, we racked it a couple of times. It, you can see, it is crystal clear. There is no sediment on the bottom of this fermenter. And that's key for when you're ready to bottle. You wanna make sure that you've racked all the sediment off of your uh, beverage so that you have a clear beverage to work with. Because if you have a sediment-free beverage to work with when bottling, that makes the bottling process go so much smoother. Also, the equipment that you're gonna need for bottling is you're going to need an auto siphon. Now, we recommend an auto siphon. Need is a relative term. I'm, I'm not really correcting her. That's true. So much as some people don't like the auto siphon. Okay, if you have a better way, go for it. Please, please, please don't just pour it in the bottles though, because you could be adding oxygenation, which could be bad for the wine long term. You're also, in coordination with the auto siphon, would want a bottling wand. Now this, I highly, highly recommend because these things are just awesome. What it has is, it's a tube that it sits on the end of your siphon hose and it has this little spring-loaded tip. There are other ones that don't have a spring-loaded tip. I highly suggest the spring-loaded one. I had the non-spring-loaded one for several years and, well, I cursed at it every single time I used it because it would get stuck in the up position and it would leak. Because what happens is, as this goes to the bottom of the bottle, it pushes that spring in, the liquid can flow into the bottle. When you get close to the top, you pull it out, it stops the flow of liquid. A couple drops will still come out, but did I just fling? No, no. <laughs> okay, so to attach this, you want to put it on about a half inch, because if you go any further, you're probably not gonna be able to get it back off, and if you don't go that far, it might come off at the wrong time. If you've seen any of our videos, you might have actually seen that happen. You also want enough bottles prepared to fill the amount of beverage that you're working with. It's always better to prepare a little beyond what you think you yeah. might have <laughs> than less than. You also need to sanitize, and everything has to be sanitized. The auto siphon, your, I mean, dip your hands in there, the bottles, everything needs to be to be sanitized. And what do we sanitize it? The red bucket of sanitization! She just likes doing that. Today we are doing a one gallon. Now this is the smaller one gallon. It's not really a gallon. And as you can see, it's not even totally full. So we have three one liter bottles and one 750 ml bottle. Most wines, whiskeys, things like that come in a 750 ml bottle. The one liter is just a little bit bigger and we like to use swing top bottles. That way we just, you know, flip it over and it's capped and it's good to go. You can use screw, screw caps if you want. You can cork it if you want to. There's a lot of ways to bottle. We just go with what's simple and works for us. If there's any concerns with how long swing tops last, we pulled out a bottle that was three years old fairly recently, tasted it, and it tasted wonderful. Nothing was wrong with it. These seals last. Um, if you are doing a carbonated beverage, it's probably better to use a swing top because they can give before the bottle will explode, just in case saves you for bottle bombs. This, however, is what's called still, meaning it has no carbonation in it. What we need now is our final element, which is something to elevate our primary vessel. And for that, we use Wibble, the white bucket of levitation. Hello. Okay, so you get your bucket there, and the reason why you need the bucket or some sort of an elevation is the way this works, it's literally a gravity feed, okay? It works by suction or gravity, however you want to look at it. So you need your source to be higher than your destination. And yeah, you guys can see that. So I'm gonna take the lid off of this. Derek is holding it because it's just a little precarious. You know, we don't want anything to fall. And I'm going to move all these bottles to the side so you can see what I'm doing. I just slip this into the bottle, all the way to the bottom, no problem. Put this other end into the brew. Now, because I know it's totally clear, I can go all the way to the bottom. The trick to this and getting it started with a wand on it, though, is you want to push down just a little bit. Then I'll take my other hand and just do this. Just get the, get the siphon started. Now, 
it'll fill fairly slowly. I don't like it to go too fast because then they have a tendency to spill. And you know, this was eight months in the making. I don't want to spill it. I don't want to waste it. I want all of this. Using clear bottles is easier. We do have some of the uh, ceramic style bottles and they're very difficult because you can't see inside. I end up holding a flashlight like in my mouth so I can see down in there and it gets a little crazy. So I suggest clear bottles. Brown bottles are okay as long as you have good lighting and you can see. I like to have the next bottle ready. Okay, just right next to it so I don't drip as much. I don't have to go as far. And that way I won't have, it, have to reach all over the place to get things. Now what I want you to watch is as this gets up here, the wand itself takes up some space. See if I pull it out, how the liquid dropped. When I put it back in, see how much it went up? Well, up in the neck, that happens a lot faster. So I usually wait till it's about here in the neck before I pull that wand out. And you'll see in just a second. It's going faster, a little faster almost there. This is why I don't like it to be feeding too fast on me. Right about there, pull that out and I have the perfect amount of headspace. What I mean by that is I don't want it to be all the way down here. And I, you know, up here is okay, but right about there seems about perfect for me. And now before I start the next one going, I'll just pop that guy on, seal it up, and he's good to go. Next bottle, get another one ready. See, very, very simple. Uh, we don't make a big deal of this. You can do this a lot of different ways. You can have that way higher. Some people like to do that. Some people will put this in what's called a bottling bucket that has a spigot on the bottom with the hose. You can do it that way too. We're doing it right from the fermenter because this way we're not handling the liquid more than it needed to be handled. If there was sediment on the bottom of that bottle, I might rack it to a pitcher first and then rack from the pitcher to the bottles just to make it so I don't have to worry as much when I get down towards the bottom and any sediment is really cut out before it can get there. The reason why I don't like sediment in the bottom of my bottles, what's the worst thing you can do to a friend? Hey, have a bottle of wine that I made for you, but when you get to the bottom, just watch out for all that murky stuff. Ew. You know, that's just kind of weird. I don't want to do that to a friend. So that's why we like our bottles to be as clear as they can be. And as you can see, that is some pretty clear stuff. There is zero sediment in the bottom of that fermenter right now. So I know this is good to go. So here we are coming up in the neck one more time and almost there as it gets lower in that bottle it'll go slower over here too and you see as we got closer to the bottom she has it on the edge that way there's more pressure and you can get you can get more of the liquid out of that bottle i'll be honest when we get all the way to the bottom and there's just that little bit left usually i just pour it off into a glass and drink that Mm. But I want to talk a little bit about storage of this stuff. Now, most wines, meads, and ciders, anything that you're making, once it's sealed up like this, you don't have to store them in the refrigerator. A lot of people seem to think you have to. You really don't, as long as they are done. If it's not finished fermenting and things like that, yeah, well, you didn't do something right, okay? So as long as they're handled properly and bottled properly, you can totally store these at room temperature. How long? Years. Literally, years. If you wax seal it in the whole thing, you can go a decade before you really need to worry. Now, that all depends on the temperature you keep them at, how much light gets to them, things like this. There's no way for me to tell you exactly how long, but the potential is there for many years of storage. So we're at the end here, and there's just not enough for another bottle. And I'm just trying to leak some of it out of the hose here so that we can just get this bottle to the, the full mark, as I like to think of it. That in there. I'm going to seal that bottle. Now, like I said, when well, there's a little bit left in the bottom there, we like to get, have a taste of it because, you know, eight months in the making, you deserve a taste. This weird gyration thing that we're doing here is how we clear the tubes because there's always a little bit left in the tubing. You don't want to make a mess. So some of it will be stuck in the bottom of the auto siphon there. She's just shaking that out. I am put, applying pressure to the bottling wand so that it all can come out. And then all that goes right into the star sand. Now, this little bit here, let's see if I can pour this with a spoon. Oh. <laughs> For those of you who are watching this because of the last part of the PyMet video, you'll be interested in this part. Wow. That is just excellent. That is, that is just, that's all there is to say. So, we back sweetened this and 
added rum, rum soaked oat chips. Mm -hmm. So this is giving it some really nice notes that we'll go over in detail in our Primate tasting. We'll probably let this age for a few months and then do a full on tasting of it. By the way, you might've noticed there's an empty bottle. We had one too many, came out to three liters. I'm okay with that. The little bit left over, if you like what you made, you just drink it and enjoy it. Or, you know, if it was like a partial bottle, you can throw that in the fridge, drink that sooner rather than later. You don't want to store a partial bottle at room temperature for too long. That said, we've gotten like a month out of it before it starts to really oxidize too much. But these three guys, they'll get labels. All we do on the label is the, what it is, the date that we bottled it, and its ABV value. That's all there really is to bottling. If you have any questions or concerns or things that you didn't understand, be sure to ask in the questions below. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.